And now we're going to talk about weak bases. Um, so just like weak acids, a weak base is not going to ionize completely in water. It just partially dissociates. And so if we had a weak base, this is a table of weak bases here. Um, let's just look at ammonia. So if we had ammonia and we put this in water, ammonia is going to act as the base, water is going to act as the acid, so that's our acid, this is our base, we just have another acid-base reaction. Remember what acids do? They donate protons, so it's going to donate a proton over here, um, and you're going to end up with the ammonium ion and the hydroxide ion. And this is always going to happen when you have a weak base. A weak base is going to react with water, the water is going to donate its proton, you're going to end up with hydroxide, and then the conjugate acid here. So this is the conjugate acid. So if we were to write the KB expression now, KB is just going to be products over reactants. So the concentration of our NH4 times the hydroxide ion um, over, there we go, all over the ammonia ion, no, sorry, ammonia that would equal this number in the table. And so this, um, you'll always have this table if you need it. Um, you have KBs here, that K is the equilibrium constant. B just means it's a, it's a base reaction, base uh, dissociation. So you have this base uh, ionizing here. You're always gonna end up with hydroxide in that type of reaction. All right, so how, do these problems, or how are these problems gonna be set up? We're gonna make ice tables again. So now they're gonna give you like an initial concentration of uh, ammonia, and they're either gonna give you the KB, and they're, ask, they're gonna ask for the equilibrium concentrations, or at equilibrium, you'll be able to find the hydroxide ion. If you know hydroxide, you know hydronium. If you know hydronium, then you find the pH. Um, so, you, or if you know hydroxide, then you know the pOH, and then you can find the pH from that. Um, so when we have base ionization reactions, we're going to we're going to have ice tables again. Uh, the only part that we're adding now is you're, when at equilibrium, you're going to solve for hydroxide ion concentration, and from that you can find the the pH. So it's a, it's a little bit further, it's a little bit more involved than the, um, the weak base problem. Just one extra step. So let's do some more examples. All right, so what's the pH of a 0.15 molar solution of ammonia? So the first thing you want to do is write out your um, your reaction. So we have, oh, oh, here we go, NH3 in water. Um, it's going to give us the ammonium ion and some hydroxide ions. And write out the KB expression to give your products of reactants. Remember, we're not, we don't put water, we don't put liquids in the equilibrium constant expression. So we have the ammonium ion times hydroxide all over NH3. We can look up the KB in the table. So the table above has the KB value. Right, if you go up there, whoa, too far. There it is. 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. That's our KB. So usually that's given to you in the problem, but they have the we have the table right above it. So 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5, that's your KB value, and they're asking for the pH, which really means find hydroxide. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find equilibrium hydroxide, so find the OH concentration. From that you can find the pOH, just do negative log, and then from that you can find the pH. So find the equilibrium hydroxide, then find pOH, then find pH, or find hydroxide, then you can find hydronium, and then pH, either way. Remember that that uh, box that we made before, where if you know one, you know all four of those. So we'll set up our ice table, and we're going to start off here with 0.15 mol molar ammonia. Our ice tables always look the same. Um, we have minus x here. Because I'm starting with something, so I'm going to subtract, and I'm going to use it up. And on the other side of the reaction, we're going to make some. Otherwise, we'd end up with a, a negative equilibrium concentration, which doesn't make any sense at all. There we go, x. And at equilibrium here, we have 0.15 minus x. So this is what I have at equilibrium. I'm going to take all of my equilibrium concentrations here, plug them into my equilibrium constant expression, and I'm going to solve for x. So I have 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5 is equal to x times x. So that's just x squared over 
0 0.15 minus x. And now I want to solve for x. And so you could do the quadratic um, equation if you wanted to, or we can make our approximation. Since this is times 10 to the negative 5, this x is probably really small. So I'm going to ignore that x. If I ignore that x, my life gets a lot easier. I can just say, all right, well, I have 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5 times, I'm going to bring this over here, so multiply over there, 0.15 is equal to x squared, and then take the square root of both sides to solve for x, <laughs> x is equal to, here we go, 0, point, you can work this out, 0, 0, 1, 6, 4, 1, 6, 4, molar, um, that's equal to our hydroxide concentration. I'm carrying out one extra sig fig there. And that's equal to our hydroxide ion concentration. So now what you want to do is solve for a pOH. pOH is just going to be negative log of your OH concentration. Negative log of 0 0.00164. So when you work that out, you get 2.79. All right, and then to find pH, we're just going to do 14 minus that. 14 minus 2.74. 2.7, sorry, 2.79. And you end up with 11.21. And so that is your pH. And clearly that's basic, so always go back and make sure um, that you end up with uh, an answer close to what you think you should be, sir.